previous tutorial, we used the crop management data tool to create a new experiment for simulating using series parking. We can go now and use within the different uh, cereal crops, search for barley, and we will see the different experiments that have already been defined. This is the one ACCO, antecedent all five. That this is the one that we already defined. Now when we have it, <coughs> we can go and run the simulation experiment. If you remember, we have different treatments, different levels of planting density, and here we can we have all selected and then we can go directly and run the model. Okay, we have already run the model and we can do an analysis of the outputs. This is the whole set of files available in general for the outputs of most models. If we go directly to the summary output file, we can view this and for the different levels we have different data. For instance, this is sowing date, planting date, day 305 of 1987. This is the thesis date, day 32 of 1988. This is the maturity date, the day of year 84, 1988. Look that the different planting densities have created a change in the maturity date. This is this column here shows the uh, uh, dry matter at harvest. We have no much difference in the different uh, with the different planting densities. If you remember, we have 400, 200, 100, and uh, 50. If I remember well, we have many more data here. Okay, we have the maximum. Leaf area index, the maximum leaf area index also changes with the planting density, and so on, and etc. Okay, let's close this. We can also plot in general all the files that have, that have a time course. For instance, there is one for plant growth. See, plant grow, we can plot different variables, that one, then we have for instance the leaf area index, we can plot that for the different levels of plant intensity that we use. Okay, this would be for 400 plants per square meter, the red line, this would be for 200 plants per square meter, the yellow line, this would be for 100 plants, the green and the black would be for 50 plants per square meter. We could export to a text file or export to Excel. We can go back and, se and select other variables, for instance, let's consider the leaf number per stem, or the four uh, levels of planting density, uh, and here are the different, this would be the highest, the number of leaves using the highest planting density is going to be smaller than the number of leaves per stem 
using the smaller planting density. We can uh, test if there is any change in the root depth. There is also let me go back. That is still a good number. We have root depth. There is almost no difference in root depth. For the different uh, for the different treatments, root depth exceeds in this case uh, 1.5 meters for all the treatments. And close this one and exit this. We can select other uh, variables, for instance. <coughs> We can uh, we can go and uh, check on the world variables and plot them. We have different variables like precipitation, day length, <coughs> length from twilight to twilight. This would cor correspond closely to the response to photo period of crop plants, solar radiation, daily PAR. Relative cloudiness factor, temperatures, average temperature during the daytime, dew point temperature, <coughs> average daily air temperature for growth or during the daytime, wind speed, and atmospheric CO2 concentration. <coughs> for instance, we're gonna draw cloudiness. We can we need only to select one. Of the treatments because for all it's going to be the same. This is the variation of cloudiness from planting until maturity. We have a typical winter period in Cordoba, southern Spain. We can close here and we can select other. Other interesting uh, the overview here is the one that we had already seen when using the IC SIM utility. The simulation overview file gives us a summary of all the important things that happen during the simulation. If you remember, for instance, we have a crop of barley, the cultivar is the default, it's starting on November the 1st, 1987. The first level that we used was 400 plants per square meter, with a goal spacing of 20. Weather corresponds to University of Cordoba, Cordoba, 1987, and the soil is the default medium sandy loam. The water balance is uh, managed using automatic irrigation, refilling the profile using a soil depth of 1 meter and 50% of available water as criteria for applying irrigation. We are using for any fertilizer 100 kilos per hectare in one application. If you remember, it was urea. The data corresponds to the simulation options that we have selected. Below is the typical table for the soil characteristics and soil initial conditions. In this case, we have a 1.5 meter depth uh, deep soil. Lower limits are in this column, upper limits are in this column. And saturation are the data in this column. This is extractable soil water between 0.1 and 0.12 uh, millimeter per millimeter, and this is the initial soil water content. 
this is the row distribution, typically an exponential function with depth, bulk density, pH, nitrate, and ammonium. Consider that we don't have uh, any inorganic nitrogen at the start of the system. These are the specific genotypic uh, coefficients for the cultivar that we have used. We have three parameters that are related to phenological development, PUV, P1D, and P5. And then we have three different parameters related to uh, the components of yield. These are the results, already the results of the simulation, gives the year and day of year, and the, uh, the day of the month and the month, November the 1st for instance, and days after planting. Here appears the growth stage, and here we have the name of the gro growth stage from sowing to harvest. Here we have also the total biomass, the leaf area index, the leaf numbers, crop nitrogen in kilo per hectare or as percent of shoot biomass. And here we have the stress for water, we have almost no water stress as it was irrigated, and the nitrogen stress. It is clear that there was some nitrogen stress at the end of the growing season. Here we have specific data basically related to harvest with dates for emergence, phases, maturity, etc. We have also a table, a summary table for environmental conditions during the growing season and for the occurrence of nitrogen or water stress affecting photosynthesis or affecting growth. There is also a calculation of different indexes of resource productivity. I, for instance, the ratio of transpiration and dry matter productivity would be kilo of dried matter per cubic meter of transpiration EP or dried matter productivity as kilo of dried matter produced per cubic meter of evapotranspiration and so on and so on. This would be calculated for the first level, the first, if you remember it was 400 Below we will have a run to that is related to the 200 plants per square meter. If we go down, we will find for the run 3 would be 100 plants per square meter. And, and the last one. Run 4 would be 50 plants per square meter. 